Thanks. And now, Mr Farras. Well, thank you. Well, Commissioner, I don't think we can call the Juncker investment plan a rip-roaring success. Just have a look around at the empty seats this morning. Uh, and the idea that tens of billions of private capital are going to arrive for joint projects with you guys, frankly, I think is pie in the sky. Though, happily, Mr Cameron, of course, has committed £6 billion of our money to this project. And if ever you're short of money, uh, just ask Mr Cameron, because he always pays up. <laughs> but it is, I think, these grand projects uh, that in many ways, I think, are sowing the seeds of the end of this political project. I came in here in 1999 and sat at the back, and there were only three of us in the whole building who thought our member states should leave the European Union. But it's grand projects that have turned the tide of public opinion, in particular the introduction of the euro. You know, I warned you, we all warned you, that it would not work for the Mediterranean countries. It could comfortably work for the optimal currency zone in the north, but no, through massive ambition and hubris, you ploughed on uh, and you allowed countries like Greece to join a currency that they were never fit for. And what is happening to Greece now? Well, they're facing the next bailout in probably July of this year. And because you want to hold your project together, you are forcing them bit by bit to become a third world country. And all I can say, frankly, is shame on you. The other big grand project was to allow into this union first eight and then ten former communist countries. Some of them with human rights records that are frankly shocking and abysmal, um, and others in which corruption is so rife that these countries have not made the transition to being full Western democracies. When I was first elected here, the word immigration did not even appear on my election address. We did not use that word once when the first three of us got elected here. But now, as we've allowed much poorer countries to have the free movement of peoples, we see considerable anger in Britain and in many countries across the north of Europe. And yes, it's led to the rise of parties that some may consider to be deeply unpleasant. But that's what happens when you take control out of people's lives. And the other feature, uh, President, that I've noticed here is the growth of what I can only describe as authoritarianism. You know, we actually saw the Prime Minister of Greece removed effectively by a coup d'etat and we saw and we saw we saw Mr Berlusconi removed by a coup d'etat and in both cases represented by appointees who were former directors of Goldman Sachs so I think you've sowed the seeds of your own destruction we have in two weeks time what is to be the biggest event in the history of this project it is the British referendum and it's not just about whether Britain leaves the European Union because if we make that choice, I'm confident many other countries will make that choice too. I did originally believe that we should leave because we were a square peg in a round hole. But when I saw what happened here in 2005, when the French and Dutch rejected the constitution, and yet, sneakily, it was brought in through the back door as the Lisbon Treaty, I realized then that this is not just bad for Britain, it's bad for the whole of Europe, and I hope that on June the 23rd, it isn't just Independence Day for the United Kingdom. I hope it brings an end to this entire project. And in a few years' time, we can be sovereign, democratic nation states that work and trade together. I hope this is the last time I'll be speaking in this parliament from a member state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope, I hope that we are going to leave this union on June the 23rd. And so I'm going out now. I may be some time. Et maintenant, député Priant. Madame la Présidente, chers collègues, il y a un an, vous adoptiez à la quasi-unanimité le plan Juncker.